And another bad thing that happened in wrestling was the unfortunate Chris Benoit murders. And I'm just wondering, there's been so many reasons given as to what happened with him snapping. I know you probably talked to him a bit. What was, what was your I, I don't. I don't have like the answer. No, you know, I mean, I think everything that you talk about probably all fits in. I'll never understand it. I mean, no matter what, with the concussions, I mean, I'll never understand him killing his son under any circumstances, a seven-year-old. I mean, I, you know, no matter what, I don't, I, and, you know, obviously, if you hear the stories from people from, like, um, Sandra, who's Nancy's uh, sister, yeah, you know, when she did the thing on the Jericho show, and that was really interesting to me, you know, going through all those details. I mean, I had talked to her, and she had said some stuff to me, but never in that great of a detail. So it was very fascinating. But even so, it, it's, I'm still left with the idea. I know some people, are the, the concussion thing, and I'm sure it has something to do with it. And it's a good answer for a lot of people going like, well, see, we have our answer. But I don't have an answer. And it's, it's frustrating because of what happened and also because, um, you know, I really, I wasn't like close with Chris Benoit or anything like that, but I did know him since he was 19 years old. You know, he'd be someone who I would see and, and was nicer to me than most. And you know, I'd met him in Japan and on, on when he first had, had gone there and went to dinner a couple times. And you know, we were just like two Americans in Japan together. Um, well, he's Canadian, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. He had two foreigners in Japan together and, and he knew the language a little bit and, and just a, a very nice guy to me. So it's kind of like you kind of know, this guy who you kind of know, and he's a really nice guy and a guy you greatly respect because as a performer, Chris is one of the greatest wrestlers I ever saw. And then this happens and it's, it's, it's you know, how do you rationalize it? And, and there is, I, I, I still have, pro I have great problems with it, you know. Because yeah, as the sister was saying, it was a very brutal scene afterwards. It was horrible, you know, yeah, that, that, that only makes it worse. And then, and then the, he brutally killed himself in, in a way that, you know, nobody would brutally kill themselves. You, you know, if you ever heard of someone <laughs> killing themselves, I mean, there's a lot of ways people have killed themselves, but I never heard of anyone killing themselves the way he did. You know, it was a, torturous, horrible way to die. I mean, you could shoot yourself in the head and be gone. I mean, he was out there, I mean, trying to, you know, strangle him, him, himself in the most horrible way possible. And is it true that the WWE Network is airing some of his stuff again now? Yeah, 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 when it's on um, the Raws and the Nitros. I mean, they don't promote it or anything like that, but uh, his footage is definitely there because I know people who, who watch the shows all the time and they have not edited the Benoit stuff out. Did you have much contact with Chris Benoit during your time in WWE? Um, he, he was another very quiet, intense individual, uh, very polite, but when he drank alcohol, you could see there was, uh, there was problems there. Yeah. Just, he would become talkative in strange ways or show physical aggression? Or? You saw a very evil person. Oh, really? Yeah. And that has to do with um, uh, neurological damage. Now that I know, because I speak with neurologists, when you have a lot of head traumas, and I know from personal experience, when you drink alcohol, you black out and, and become very violent. And I suffer from that as well now. So that's why I can't touch alcohol. What was your theory on, uh, on what happened with the killings? Well, I like to talk about one thing that nobody talks about. There was another there was another body found that day. Another wrestler died that day that nobody talks about. He was kin to Chris. His name was um, Biff Wellington. Oh, from Stampede Wrestling. From Stampede Wrestling. That was Chris Benoit's former tag team partner. And they did tours together in Japan. He was found the same day that Chris was found dead. Where was he found dead? He was found dead in Alberta. Now, we all know that there was text messages between different wrestlers and Chris, right, to the office and right. Chavo Guerrero. I would like to know if there's any communication between Biff Wellington and Chris. That's what I'd like to know. Because that's, that's an eerie coincidence to me. Did you have much contact with Chris Benoit when you were in WWE? I, uh, well, he came to OVW. We took him out for his birthday, you know, and uh, we had a really good time. And actually, I, uh, the, the first, I, I said, forget this, when I was married, I was raising a little boy. And I took Hayden to a, a house show in USL or a TV where I was gonna maybe do a dark.
Yeah. And Hayden was there like six years old and I, I didn't really want to bring him, but I, he was begging me to go. Cause I was new and you know, you just don't want to bring Kit, you know. And uh, Benoit saw, I was new and he didn't even know me, but he saw Hayden, got him in the ring, wrestled with him, gave him DVDs and t-shirts and everything. That made, like for Hayden, he still talks, he's like 20 something now. But that was like phenomenal, you know. Uh, so I liked Chris a lot personally and in the ring. I thought he was a tremendous worker. I don't know if we're going there with this question, but what allegedly transpired that night with him, I do not believe that story. I wholeheartedly, and I'm not going to go into conspiracy theories, but I think something else happened that night, and I don't believe that he killed his son or his wife or himself. And maybe I'm crazy, but I knew him too well. So I've uh, done some research into that on my on my own. I am going to read your book because uh, next year is the 10th anniversary of that murder, and we're going to be doing some interviews with some people that uh, were related to that murder on the Hannibal TV next year. But in your opinion, uh, what actually happened with his mind? Because it seems like it was a combination of a lot of things. There was the concussion issues. Obviously, he was on a lot of steroids and other drugs. Uh, but in your opinion, what actually happened there? Well, what was really unique in my situation, and, and I got a, a fair amount of press out of it just because of it, is... Um, not well when Eddie Guerrero died I emailed Chris who I'd known for many years right I'd been writing about wrestling since uh, 1985 and and knew about him and obviously followed his career in Calgary and then did a big long interview with him with and got to WCW because I was all excited because you know this is a guy who'd been to Japan this and that so we'd kept in touch over the years a little bit I can't say we were great friends or whatever but you know Eddie Guerrero died I knew they were good friends I sent him an email and he sent back and then we sort of kept in touch a little bit and he talked about how Eddie had died and Nancy had bought him a journal you know a diary a place to write down his thoughts and he, how difficult he was having um, a time just trying to deal with his own emotions and and it was all laid out there right there in this email and and there was a couple like that and it was it was an interesting insight into to Chris Benoit and so when we did broke up the book that you know, the events happened in June and the book was done by August and on the shelves by the end of September, which is a really fast time in publishing. Um, and uh, so I did the stuff about Chris Benoit and that, sort of that aspect, but I also insisted there was a chapter on Nancy, you know, and her wrestling career because we used to love to watch her strut. And um, so it, what happened exactly? I don't know. I think depression was certainly a big part of it. And uh, you just think in 10 years how much further we've come in understanding concussions and how that affects depression and and how that affects mood and 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 reactions and actions so i think there's that that got it, it didn't get discussed a lot at the time um, right. but i think depression had a lot to do with it and because he also lost his friend johnny grunge uh, who lived there in atlanta so there were a number of factors that just added up um and he snapped yeah and i could see someone snapping almost for killing their wife but it just seems so tragic that the child was murdered as well in that situation. Amen, was amen. Very like, unfortunate. I was on um, Entertainment Tonight Canada with the book when it came out, and, and my son had only just been born, like, in November 2006, and this is, you know, not that much long. It's not even a year later, and, you know, you just don't understand anyone could do that to a child. But uh, fam wanted me to ask just some specific memories of, of Nancy managing you and, and that relationship because it was a good pairing um, when you guys were together. Yeah, I mean, we started off as friends and uh, we became more than friends. And I think she was, doesn't get the credit she deserves. She was a forerunner to the Divas. And you also worked with uh, Chris Benoit. <coughs> Excuse me. What was he like, and did you see any uh, anything knowing him as a person that you would expect what ultimately happened with him? No, Chris was great, man. I had some of my best matches with Chris, to be honest with you. Like, when we were doing that little ECW thing with WWE, him and I had a long stretch where we were wrestling on house shows, wrestling on TV, and like I said, some of my best matches were with him. I'm very proud of my work with Chris, and we had good, solid, hard-hitting matches. And uh, honestly, to this day, I still think there's more to it than what meets the eye, because, I mean, I, I know Chris personal, knew Chris personally, and never in a million years would I have thought that would have happened, but you never know. I mean, obviously something happened, 
and I'm not an investigator by any means or a criminologist, but it's uh, very out of character if you ask me, someone who knew him personally and saw him every day. It's, you know, nothing I would have ever expected happening. What was he like outside the ring, and did you have any premonitions that he may have had a dark side to No. Him? I'm going to tell you something, man. Chris Benoit to me, it, I'll never forget it. Uh, after it happened, I was just, I was in my front yard mowing, and I, I was sitting there going, man, what a gentleman Chris was. Then it hit me. He's not a gentleman, he's a monster. Now, Devin, I don't, this is just totally my opinion. You know, I'm going to go by what everybody was saying. Texas, he was sitting in the Javo and stuff like that. All right, we know at that time, if you got sent to ECW from Raw to SmackDown, you were getting your notice, okay? And that's what it looked like for him. Now, we got to remember, too, Chris had had three, four, or five tryouts with Vince and never made it. You know, now, let's just look at the circumstance. He's married another man's wife in the business, which is taboo. You know, he's about to lose his job. He's overextended himself. And the word depression is right there. I think his wife had a restraining order against him at some point. There was some police stuff going on. Oh, well. was it? Yeah, there was some marital issues. Well, see, think about that. So now here it is. You know you're about to lose your job. Your wife's threatened to leave you. You got a kid. You know, and Chris was a quiet guy. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. But uh, it was just too much for one person. And that's what, guys, it's just, the business does that to people. And it might, it might not go out and commit mass murder but you either overdose yourself from depression or you do things to yourself that you that affects your family, you lose your wife. This is, depression's linked there, guys. Were you surprised about what happened with him? Yeah, you know, I, all those years you know a guy, you know, and, uh, you know, you and I talking, you know, shoot, women get you pissed off. You, you know, I, I could see, you know, doing something with your wife, you get pissed off, you get mad at her. But man, when you fall to a kid, you know, that's, there's something wrong there. You know, evil, wrong, and uh, you know, I never really knew. I knew Chris when he was in WCW, but when he went up to WWF, I wasn't. I knew of Chris. I was around Chris for all those years, but I wasn't real good friends with you know Chris. So, I, um, you know, when you hear those things, guys, you know, and they did autopsy on him. They said his brain was, you know, he had concussion issues, and they were the worst he uh, they've ever seen with football players and wrestlers. He's his brain deal was one of the worst. So. You know, I, I don't know, and then you, you, you enhance it with these, you know, pills and other things going on. You never, hell, you never know what these guys are thinking. Were you uh, shocked when she was killed, I guess? Oh, uh, yeah, were you fucking kidding me? Yeah, dude, I was, oh, dude, I hurt right there. I hurt my heart right there. Yeah, dude, I was fucking devastated. I couldn't move. I was just, Vince got us all together. Um, I'm in, uh... What's that town in Texas on the fucking ocean? Um, I forget what, I'm in Texas. And you know, there's like 70 of us there. He sits us all down and, and we knew it was gonna be the Benoit was dead. And then they hit us with uh, the kid and, and fucking um, and Nancy. And fuck, I just started bawling. I couldn't move. I was in that seat for another three hours. Everybody else was going or doing whatever. I just, I was so devastated. I, I couldn't even move. Cause our family, our sons were the same age. My son, uh, which which one was that? Oh, that was Oliver. I had five sons, so I'm trying to think of like which one it was. And yeah, they were the same age, and, and they and um and they would bring them to shows like the big shows. So fucking our kids would play together, and me and Nancy were super tight. So so obviously she knew because Chris had been in these. Uh, he had been in ECW for a long time, but me and him didn't talk much. You know, I was like, hey, dude, how you doing? You know what I mean? But then I guess he figured out, Nancy told him how cool I was, and Chris buddied up to me, like, right away. You know, at that period, I was so far removed from the wrestling business. I was living in the Keys. I had the gym. I hadn't gone out and done anything. And I remember Teddy Long calling me and telling me, and I was shocked. I was shocked. So... I didn't know what was going on in their lives, so I don't, I can't surmise what happened. But it's a tragedy because, you know, it's a human life, and the people that were, that are gone, are gone, can never come back. But the people that were left, and was, and the children, and the one's ex wife, his mother, his father, Nancy's sister, who can't have children, that means her mother and father can never have grandkids. 
It's a tough thing. It's a tough thing. And the horror that the poor child would have gone through that night was, was just unimaginable. That's why I don't understand the people that still stick up for him, because that's a pretty monstrous thing to, to do. It, it's a monstrous thing to do, but some of us want to believe our heroes are heroes, not human beings, and anything can happen to people, I think. Yeah. Sometimes people... It, we don't know if drugs were involved, alcohol, somebody snacked. Well, we do know he was on a lot of drugs. He was on a lot of, because it was found in his house, and it was clear that he was on a lot of steroids by his, uh, by his body, the way his body looked, and by the stuff that was found in his house, I guess. What about all these uh, fools out there that uh, claim that uh, you're somehow the true yeah. culprit? Well, it's this way. Conspiracy theory people, and I believe there's some conspiracies, but because he was such a fabulous wrestler, you don't want to believe it. You know, you want to look at something else. And the one that gets me is, well, he's he's in the church of Satan. Ah, come on. I go to church. I'm a Catholic. I go to church on Sundays and discuss shit with my priest. Uh, but if they have to believe it, it doesn't bother me because maybe that's how they sleep at night. Maybe they don't want to see their hero is what that happened. It's a horrible thing. And as you also mentioned, you explained it well, but you were broken up where you weren't living together with for eight months yeah. and this death occurred years later yeah. and why would you have anything to do with the kid? Yeah. Like yeah, man, it's just one of those things, I hate to say it like this, but shit happens, and that's the quote. So, uh, I think that he was one of those guys that was he, was, he was so passionate about the business, almost to a fault. And I can tell you this, when I heard, because I was watching the pay-per-view live, um, when all that happened, and as soon as I heard that he wasn't making the show because of a family emergency, and I went, what? And there was referee Wes Adams was down at the press box with me in Tampa. We were watching it at a, at a bar there. He said, yeah, you know, he's not making it because of a family issue. And right away I went, something's wrong. Because Chris Benoit is one of those stubborn guys that, and he would like, if anybody ever missed a show because they were sick or you know what I mean, he was one of those guys that he would show up like just to be there even if he was hurt, you know what I mean? He was such a guy that was so professional and you know what I mean? So as soon as he told me that and TJ goes, hey man, do you want to call him and make sure everything's okay? And I said, no, I'm not going to call him. He goes, well, why? I said, well, what's the point? And then he was like, you're not going to call him? I said, no. And right there, I knew there was something really, really wrong. And I'm not to say that I'm a psychic, but I have had certain sort of feelings, like stuff like that, where it, you know a guy, what he's kind of like. And Chris was kind of an odd person. And he, was a, he was a very private person as well. I knew how much he cared about his family. Not that I predicted or knew that something like that happened, but I did know that there was a chance that something like really traumatic happened for him not to show up. So. I think Natty called Nancy and she didn't get a hold of her at all, left a message. And I kind of knew that. And then I kind of, I went into, because I was in FCW that, at that time, went to wrestling practice that next day. Everyone was kind of asking me if they heard anything. I was going, no, I'm sure he's all right. But I'm thinking in my head, no, I know he's not all right. I know something's up. And then when I heard the news, it was like really shocking and a real, I mean, really really traumatic you know because I had just seen him two weeks before that in Orlando <clears throat> me him and Chavo Guerrero we were doing Hindu squats they were filming Smackdown running the stairs everything seemed to be fine well actually I'll take take that back one thing that was odd because I said hey Chris are you still doing the because he was legendary for doing the 500 Hindu squats I said hey are you still doing your squats he goes no nah, man I'm just you know I'm just not doing them I don't know why I just thought, okay, you know, whatever. 
But maybe, maybe there was something going on with him that was making him not doing it because whenever I'd see him, he would always have like his little cup of, like a styrofoam cup of coffee with the straw in it and he'd be chewing it and be like, so you still doing your squats? Like, yeah, yeah, I am. How many, 500? Yeah, that's good. All right, you want to do some? Like he was, he was like always kind of like, in, like that intense kind of guy. When he told me that, not, and then looking back on it, when I found out about all that, you know, and part of the big thing that I think about all that is you can blame steroids and stuff like that, but here's my opinion. One is if you go to a gym, and you probably see a lot of guys, people are going to look, oh, that guy's on steroids, that guy's on steroids. Okay, fair enough, we can judge. Are they on steroids? Maybe, yes, no, I don't know. Are they going home and killing their wife and son? No. Okay. So, can you ultimately blame steroids on the incident with Chris Benoit? I don't think it's fair to do that because, you know, and did concussions play a big role in it? I think so, probably. That's a good assessment. Do I think that when he was, at the time, he was taking a lot of antidepressants and stuff like that, a lot of depression because of the Eddie Guerrero death, the death of Big Boss Man, the death of uh, Victor Black Cat? Yes, I do. And I've also always talked about the butterfly effect. You know, butterfly does this, does this, and then all of a sudden, you know, a train hits something, boom. It could have been something as simple as that, but I think that he just, for him to have snapped like that must have been something, Nancy must have told him that she was leaving him. And from what I now know, it wasn't one of those deals where he accidentally choked her unconscious because I can tell you, because I've choked a guy out on the street once, it takes, uh, you have to have the choke in for, I think it's at least two minutes for that to happen. So you choke a girl, oh shit, I, okay, I drop her, I wake her up. And from what I've heard is that the room was totally like a tornado hit it and the way how he suffocated her and stuff makes me think, man, that is a absolutely horrible thing to do. And he's should he should never be forgiven for anything like that. I don't know how to this day, Devin, I don't know how people look at me with a straight face and have actually asked me, when is Benoit going to the Hall of Fame? I don't understand that. Probably after my cat Lily, when she goes to the Hall of Fame. Uh, Chris was a cool dude. He was the hardest worker I've ever been in the ring with. My favorite matches of all time. But much like I would probably react to Jeffrey Dahmer being in the ring with me, uh, I have to now put Chris in a category that's untouchable. He, he's gulag from WWE history forever. I can't see him ever getting back in. Until Daniel and Nancy come back, then I guess after that maybe he can come in. But it was a horrible trap. Tragedy. It sucked to happen. When it happened, it knocked us all on our asses. It was a great, that's the single worst thing I saw happen to pro wrestling in the last, I don't know, since maybe ever. I don't know if anything was so shocking. It put a horrible stigma on pro wrestling. I mean, I, I still answer to this day, all oh, you guys all do that concussions, you do this, you do that, and he murdered his family because of wrestling, or just one thing after another. It was a hard, for a guy that was probably the top worker of his generation who absolutely wanted to leave the business better than he found it, I think he did the exact opposite and it sucks. When my, I was taking a nap the, the day that we found out it all happened. And when my son woke me up, same house I live in right now. And when my son woke me up and said, uh, Chris and Nancy and Daniel are dead. First thing that went through my head is, did he kill her or did she kill him? Didn't have a thought in the world that it was anything else. Not a, and but if you really if you if you look back at that tape, William Regal said, I don't want to talk about Chris the person, I want to talk Chris the wrestler, because he knew the same thing. He was in that clique. And it's sad. It's sad that they they had very they had very uh, slowly taken themselves out of that group and start to really be private, even to that group that we used to hang out with. Uh, they moved to a different house, none of us knew that. He, he had put up big gates, none of us knew that. The only one they felt comfortable talking to, Chris and Nancy, about any of their issues was Johnny Grunge. Johnny Grunge was a fun guy, kind of a screw up, you know, did a lot of, you know, drank a lot, got in trouble, stupid stuff. Nancy knew him from ECW, Chris knew him from WCW, and I think that Chris and Nancy were very uh, concerned that people would think that there was something wrong with them because they were having problems. So they didn't want to share their problems with any of their friends. 
So the one guy they could both, both go to was Guns, because Guns was kind of the screw up, fun guy, and he was never going to, you know, think anything. But I, I think anything bad about them, and he helped them a lot of time. And I truly believe, to this day, without a doubt in my mind, that if Johnny Grunge didn't die, that Chris and Nancy and Daniel would be alive. He was their only go-to outlet, and when he passed, they had nowhere else to go. And, and it's, it's just really sad. Uh, what do you say about it? There are people that just lose, that, that are off a little bit, and they click. We hear about it every day, whether it's you know some guy shooting up a mall or or you know all the crazy stories we hear. Um, unfortunately, I used to be friends with one of them. And what do you say about all these idiots out there that I guess are just super Chris Benoit fans that claim that this is all a big conspiracy and Kevin Sullivan had something to do with this? I say that they need to go back and uh, and find another conspiracy because there's not a chance. There's not a there's more of a chance than. Then, uh, then, then Donald Trump is working for Vladimir Putin uh, as we speak, then, uh, then, then that happened. It's absolutely, look, I saw it with my own eyes. People saw it with their own eyes, the dysfunction that they had pulling away, all the symptoms, like I told you, when I was informed what happened, I didn't have a doubt that one killed the other. My only sadness was that Daniel didn't, didn't survive. He didn't deserve it. Um, and look, let's be honest, and not to, Nancy, Nancy was a great person and a good friend, uh, Nancy was rough. Nancy was a tough girl. Nancy could go at it too. So it wasn't like Chris was beating his wife and Nancy's going, you know, they were, they were pulling back and forth uh, at each other. And it was almost like, who's going to flip? Who's going to really go overboard for, over the edge first? And you hope that, no, that they would be able to, to, to make it work, you know. But like I said, if Grunge was alive, I, there's not a doubt in my, that that night, whatever happened, Chris would have left, would have driven to Grunge's. And they would have talked, and grun and then Nancy would have, Chris would have come home. Nancy would have driven to Grunge's. They would have talked, and then two days later, all three of them would have laughed about it. Not a doubt in my mind.